uh, you know, just right that there are three columnists on the panel, so I'm going to draw on that. But there is a there is a fundamental uh, um, reality between valuation that it is based on the expectations of the capital provider as to what the capital will uh, earn over the uh, period of C five seven years, whatever may that be. So just to decode that. Uh, when I am entering a company at an X valuation, yes, that particular valuation is not as important as what I expect the company, given the growth curve of the company or the uh, growth plan of the company, to earn at the time that we are exiting. So typically, we, earn, we basically draw out what we call at least uh, for as we investing for a very long time. And what we what I realized is that. If valuation is not cheap or expensive just because the multiple is X or Y. So, you know, a lot of people said that a flip, flip card at $15 billion is still very reasonably priced because they were going 100% year on year or month on month, I beg your pardon. The moment that 100% of month on month got rationalized to a 20% month on month, the valuation has got, has got pegged down to $7.5 billion or $5 billion. doesn't matter. So what I'm trying to re say is that finally the, the key lies in what are the what is the investor or the set of investors really expecting the future value to be, and that could be multiple based, it could be a earnings model based, it could be uh, just sheer uh, you know just sheer based on demand and supply. Many of our many of the valuations that you see that are happening in many of the hot sectors. Are, uh, are because the supply of very high quality jeans are very limited and the demand for them is very high. So basically, in our, uh, line, in our world, we have something called as a FOMO. FOMO is the fear of missing out. So, oh my god, I don't have an e-commerce company in my portfolio. I better go and invest in that. Doesn't matter the valuation. But there is also a reality that sets in and there's another term that I like much more which is called Jomo, Joy of Missing Out. Thank God I don't have e-commerce in my portfolio. <laughs> so it's, it's, a, it's, it's a subjective expectation, some quantitative of course, uh, basis for this valuation. But most importantly, I tell the, the thing that I tell the entrepreneur is that the, if the entrepreneur is focused on deep fundamental value and value drivers, that's all we look for. Leave the valuation to the market because it is a market phenomena and eventually the right level will be found. But if entrepreneurs start chasing out valuation, then I think both the company and the investor are in trouble. Absolutely. So just, uh, I think how many of you have tried investing in stock markets? And uh, okay, so the last two three years have been kind of a one directional market, probably a little bit challenge in the last six months you would be facing. But don't you find it strange that you know the di great discussions which very ex renowned experts do on the television that you know today there is a positive sentiment for a company and tomorrow it turns negative. I mean, can, a, can anything change in a company which is 30 years old in a day's time or in a week's time? Nothing changes. So it's just an investor's mind. The valuation, as she said, too many people trying to buy a property in your locality because of certain reason, suddenly. And too many people suddenly deciding, nobody deciding nobody to buy because there is probably a story of a ghost in that house. The value drops to zero. So value is really a multiple of, you know, a sentiment. And as she said, why are investors investing in companies? Why you might call them angels or you might call them venture capitalists, they are investing to make money, to get higher returns on their investment. So they invest in companies and how do they get their returns? When they sell these companies, most of the time other investors. So they have to find out what are the other investors looking for. So right, so sometimes this process may be very irrational for the entrepreneur because he can't understand that why somebody is not giving me money and why somebody is giving money to the other person. So the, because there is a lot of other things which work, the investors are thinking why put money three years down the line, these are the investors who are interested in this kind of company and I will sell to them. So that's that's something which you need to also understand where the hat of the other person rather than just going on merits 
because they have their own investor return expectation. So never, you should never be really worried about, you know, a valuation which is irrational sometimes it may appear to you. You should just understand it works like that. Probably the industry in which you are, right now the sentiment is not good, but if your company is good, sooner or later, capital finds its way. I am a firm believer that capital chases efficiency, capital chases good entrepreneurs. So sooner, it may be one year down the line, it may be three years down the line, but capital will reach the person who is really sharp, who is really good and who is really doing something disruptive. Capital will sooner or later reach him and his valuations, again over a period of three to five years, will be much better than a lot of other companies. Uh, but then the last question to you, I mean, this is something that is a sort of benefit that is, so I'm just uh, overshooting the time a little bit. As a, as a uh, digital head, how do you assess which product that you buy from the market, digital product that you buy from the market, gives you what kind of profitability? Do you, do you have the kind of, uh, I mean, the, the bikes have the kind of information system to process that kind of a thing? As a, uh, you know, uh, coming from uh, the, the background of being in the digital space for some time, it has been observed in the last, say, about say, 24 months. That there are solutions which come to you as options. So, for example, let me start with that. My mobile banking application, which is the bank, mobile banking application, has four startup ideas embedded. So typically what we have done is we have identified those products which are there, which, which were being presented to us by some time. We have picked up that solution and created it as a customer solution within the mobile, mobile channel. So a, a process like this is an evaluation of the fact that if the solution that is being presented to us looks in a way which gives you comfort in terms of adding to the customer experience that you are in that is, is a part of your roadmap anyways for that channel. And also due to the customer experience, will there be additional customer revenue or uh, or build that happens? And therefore my engagement with my customer increases and therefore the business opportunity in the entire thing. So typically a direct startup idea or a or a digital solution which comes out may not be the direct integration into a product portfolio that we have. But it can be embedded into various other portfolio, uh, other solutions that we are creating for the customer and then taking it forward. So, uh, so you know, we create these uh, propositions which are segmented propositions. For example, I create a woman's proposition, woman-driven proposition from a bank. Okay, now as a bank, as a savings account, there is no difference between no major differentiator that I can get other than maybe some kind of a loan benefit that I can give. What can I do is I create certain, uh, you know, collaborative propositions which, which, which would include say uh, uh, a health checkup which is relevant to a, a woman or something of that sort. So typically a book we that I can create. So uh, there, are, there are various collaborations that we do with these kind of customers, build a package proposition and then take it forward to the market. So that the market understands it as a you know one proposition from the bank, and this is powered by all these startup propositions that we have. So that is how we actually create the ROI on on an overall basis rather than individual properties. But the satisfaction of the customer is at the center. Unless somebody wants to add something, I think we we'll take the questions. Yeah, yeah, we we'll take the questions now. Please pass your questions to the nearest volunteer.